Hello, this is a narration of a portrait that I did. In fact, this was a commission that I did for someone and it's a portrait of a dog. And here we go. Um, starting off in Infinite Painter again to get the basic shapes in it. As you can see, that's a very simple shape. But actually, once you see how it goes on, that shape is pretty much all there is to the painting. <laughs> And that's the way it is sometimes, but it, um, it's very important, um, just the shape language that you spot. And uh, roughly put in the eyes, got to get them in the right place, of course. And just splashing things in. I do really like the Infinite Painter brushes. They're the best brushes I've found on a tablet. Um, they, they just feel really nice. And just getting everything roughly in place. Getting the contrast. As you can see, the focus is simply going to be the face and the rest doesn't really matter that much. And the eyes are going to be the most important as well. And just get them roughly in the right place at the moment for when I start to apply some detail. As you can see, the details already start to come in. The lighter colours are starting to come in. It's already coming in quite well. Now this is imported into Art Rage. So let the detail commence. Everything is roughly in place. And now I just need to start to refine. At the moment, I'm just playing around with some brushes. I'm just using a, um, a preset here, which I don't often use. Um, typically with the oil brush, I set it to default values and then play around with things. But I thought I want some kind of stiff brush in here to emphasize the hair. So I've created a separate layer and just using white and just seeing how it works. As you can see there, I'm just laying in. Um, now I would have set, again, I think I may have mentioned this in my previous videos that I set typically when I import from Infinite Painter or anything else and then start working on it, I want it to look um, like a traditional painting so you can see the brush strokes. So this is a layer set to multiply, set to bright white, and I thought rather than setting the stiffness all the way down, which I usually do and keep them thinnest to zero, um, I would just try and set something that is still quite stiff, um, because my idea was then that would look a bit more like hair when I actually apply it. So this is what I'm doing here, I'm just flicking it over the face, just to make... So this has an interesting fact that I'm actually using the um, the visibility of the thickness of paint to look like fur to add in that bit of detail. This was you now this is something I thought I would experiment with, and there, I was just um, toying with it a bit, toggling it on and off to see whether it worked okay, and now I am just applying it again and wanting really to get into the eyes because I know that they're going to be the most important. They don't look great at the moment um, but I wanted to get straight in there and just to add some detail. I think overall there's a fair amount of work that's required on this uh, because the import was fairly rough overall. and. Uh, but um, the contrast is the most important thing. I wanted, to, as you can see, the head is almost black totally, and then it provides a nice. And this this was actually pretty much what the reference image looked like as well. So that was quite handy. I didn't really need to enhance anything. It almost worked perfectly for me regarding having the head stand out automatically anyway. And here I have set it to palette knife. My usual settings, maybe 75% or maybe two thirds up of both. So it enables me to pull the paint around to simulate some kind of fur on him. And also it adds in um, all my lines and a tiny bit of blending and adds in extra detail. It, um, it's one of my favorite tools actually in ArtRage because it can almost do anything. And I really do like just slapping the paint down roughly and then starting to pull it around. That's kind of my preferred technique. As 
which you can see I'm just adding in the detail the fur and then the eyes I'm kind of coming back to every now and again and it's getting there it's I decided in the end not to just go diving into the eyes and getting them absolutely perfect I'm doing a bit coming back out doing some fur and then diving back into the eyes again and again pulling things around as you can see the fur start to come out quite a lot now and what's also um, quite useful regarding using the palette knife is to pull out the edges of the focal character especially when it's an animal you can pull out the fur quite nicely and um, instantly it starts to look more natural and fits into the scene much better again popping into the eye and then back out again tidying this area up here because it wasn't that great and as you can see what I was talking about before just pulling those shapes out um, pulling it out um, they were very simple before they didn't have any definition or anything but using the palette knife it gives some nice edges but also blends a bit towards the edges and then on here you can see the fur coming out and it's not just a straight line because as I said it blends slightly as well so it looks more natural And the details really coming in now possibly a bit too much I'm not quite sure yet I don't usually go too much overboard with all these things um, sometimes I use um, the ink pen as you can see here I've got the ink pen selected now what I use that for typically is when I'm doing the pupils because I set it on quite high opacity and what the ink pen generally gives you is just a straightforward circle it's a very simple um, tool it does give some tapering as well but what I use it is quite a blunt instrument to just um, for example you could go in there and do the pupil and do it circular although whenever I try and do it I can never get it to be exactly circular which may be not such a bad thing because it looks more natural but as a little shortcut what I tend to do is go into the ink pen select black and then just dot it um, dot it there and then you'll get an absolute perfect circle because of the way the ink pen works on full opacity and it's just a solid color coming out as well and certainly for the pupil a lot of the time it's going to be a solid black so it's almost well why not let's just let's just get that in there and it certainly will be a solid black with this regarding how um, how this pose is situated flipping it a few times as well just to make sure because when you flip it it's almost like it resets your eyesight completely and you get a new perspective so you can see um, how it's going on and I think it looks okay although as you can see I'm not quite happy with that eye and here at the moment I'm into warp mode and I was just thinking about just squeezing it just making it a bit smaller it doesn't when I flipped it I think it was immediately apparent that this eye wasn't looking too great and again I just moved it slightly um, I just used the um, the brush on uh, move just to move it down and um, typically what I do also after a warp is I undo and then redo um, so control Z and control Y just to see whether it makes any difference or not um, whether it has actually um, improved the overall images and it's all these small changes that you make that's one small change to the eye and then when I flip it again I may spot something else and then around this time I do have a habit of using the warp tool quite a lot just to tweak things around because all the paints there a lot of the detail is already there and I don't really want to repaint things as you normally would traditionally and this is a great thing about digital is that with moving the eye what you typically do is just paint it completely out and then redo it but then you might lose the eye slightly and may still not be in the right place and you're fiddling around with it forever um, but with this, with the warp tool, you have everything there. It's just a case of moving some pixels around into the right places, which is really useful. And here, as you can see, I imported a um, texture that I took. And I think, if I remember correctly, this may be a texture of a hot water bottle that I've got. And I've just overlaid it because I had an idea that... Um, if you see that I thought I wanted to overlay something with a lot of texture in but take the opacity way down so that was before and rather than because you know I'm lazy sometimes 
well, quite a lot of the time regarding my painting. And then, I, I, as you can see there, you have all the detail on the on the um, main face, but um, there are kind of almost some blank areas here, some areas with not so much detail. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing when you're doing a portrait, but I just felt that I wanted a bit more detail around here. Now, what I could do is come in and start painting all this detail, but I, the nature of it, I wanted it to be quite textual um, as some kind of material, um, but I couldn't really be bothered to do all that. So I had an idea, well, yeah, I remember taking a picture of this hot water bottle with all this fur on, and I think if I overlaid it in, then it, and then reduce the opacity a lot, you know, a very subtle change. It will save me having to paint all that. It wouldn't look artificial and it would just add an extra level of interest. So let's see how that went. So that's imported in. And then as you can see, I'll change the opacity very, very subtly and, um, and try to import something there as well, as you can see. That is a um, picture I took of a mat that I've got at home because I thought that might work well behind uh, the dog. And then again, uh, playing around with the uh, um, blending modes this time rather than the opacity. Uh, but that didn't really work too well. So I wanted extra detail on the back here. As you can see there, there's not much detail. So what I went into is I went into the sticker brush and I, um, I've got different categories and I've got a whole load of um, uh, different brushes that I've created and I wanted just to overlay something on multiply in the background just to see whether because uh, because I don't want to draw attention too much to it I don't want you know your eyes almost drawn to this bright part up here and given the fact I've put in extra detail in the foreground I wanted to put a bit of detail in the background but not make it too much not too obvious so here I was just playing around some of the brush, the texture brushes that I've created just to try and apply a bit of grunge, just to add a bit of extra interest and to darken it up as well. I think that's working quite well. And as you can see, all these little changes are really starting to um, push, push the level of detail in quite a quick and easy way. I mean, just imagine if I went through and just painted all these bits, it would take ages to do all that. Um, but oh, I just can't be asked. But the idea was there in my head of what I wanted to do and it's a tool to use and it's digital art so why not? Um, and as you can see here there are some like white areas which you always got to be careful on which don't quite look right. Of course the light's not really going to get... Um, oh hang on, we, oh yeah. I don't think, it doesn't quite look right that the light's going to get there so I may have to tidy those up and as you can see I'm just going in there and taking them out but again, this actual um, face is all on a separate layer, so that's very easy to do. I can just use the er eraser here and um, uh, just a little bit of softness so it takes the edges off so I don't get quite a full edge on it. It's, it's kind of I'm at the tidying up stage, really. The idea is pretty much there. And as it's a commission piece, I just want to absolutely make sure that um, it's going to work. Playing around with some textures again. It's just playing around. Um, and then, as you see there, just absolutely. that This, at times, is a bit of my go-to texture that I took um, of, uh, as, you, as you, you can see exactly what it is. But I always like this one to import it because, one, it's got a nice, interesting focal point and then things coming out from it. But also, it's almost um, mono as well. So, therefore, it's gonna import it in, and depending if you do a multiply or something, uh, or even a screen, it's gonna give some quite interesting, just subtle textures. So I'm in, I'm just seeing whether it work uh, or not. It may be very very subtle, and again I'm playing with some blend modes to see whether it work. And I think generally, generally I'll leave it in, but it's it's very very subtle. It's like on a very very low opacity. Um, here I'm just. Uh, I just changed the saturation slightly there um, because I felt it just didn't quite feel as if it was see there and then to there. I just wanted it to pop a bit more overall and uh, just increase the contrast slightly on it, which is something you can do in ArtRage. ArtRage has some simple um, 
simple filters regarding that so you can do something but that just again it's a very subtle change but it just adds that extra level of uh, um, extra level of interest I think and that is pretty much it overall so there we go that's how I approach a animal portrait typically and that's how I did my commission uh, thank you very much for watching <laughs>